welcome to this video from the RC Ground School. In this chapter, we're going to go over some important information you'll need to understand when getting started as a new RC pilot. These topics include understanding your model's components, assembling your EPO foam model, and setting up your transmitter and making adjustments to get your model ready for its successful maiden flight. In this video, we'll focus on your model's components. Your basic trainer model has many of the same components as a similar full-scale airplane, and they perform the same functions. Let's take a look at the biggies. The first main component is the aircraft's fuselage. That's the long structure that normally holds the motor or engine. It includes the passengers and storage compartments and is what the wing and tail structures attach to. The wing is the primary lifting body. It's mounted to the fuselage at a 90 degree angle. The wing not only provides the majority of the aircraft's lift, it also includes the ailerons and flaps. You may have a model with a one-piece wing where you glue the left and right halves together or each half may mount separately. The airplane's tail section is called its empennage. It includes the vertical stabilizer and rudder as well as the horizontal stabilizer and elevators. Depending on your model, you may either glue or screw the empennage into place. The airplane's wheels are referred to as its landing gear or just gear. Trainer airplanes can be found with tricycle gear with a nose gear and two main gear or with a main gear and tailwheel configuration. Generally, trainers with tricycle gear are easier to control on the ground. Most trainer airplanes have what are called fixed gear. That is, they stay down all the time. They are normally screwed into place. On model airplanes, the flight controls are moved using servos attached to control rods and control horns. In the trainer models, the control rods are stiff wire rods that connect to the servo's arm and to the control horn on the flight control. A small plastic device with a pin and snap retainer is called a clevis and normally screws into the end of the control rod. The pin goes through one of the holes in the control horn to make the connection. Some models use small connectors where the control rod passes through and is held in place with a grub screw or other small screw. You can make small adjustments to align the control surface to the corresponding structural surface by screwing the clevis further into the control rod or further out or loosening the screw on the other style connector. The spinning blade that pulls the airplane through the air is called the propeller. They normally consist of either two or three blades mounted on the front of the motor on the nodes of the fuselage. In the trainer airplane category, there is a major exception to this placement, however. Some trainers have the motor mounted facing backward behind the cockpit area. As with the front-facing motor, the propeller is mounted to the motor shaft and in this case, however, the propeller pushes the plane forward rather than pulls it. This configuration is good for trainers as the motor and the prop are better protected from ground contact in the event of a crash. Never power on your model in the shop or in the pits with the propeller installed. This presents a serious safety hazard. With all this in mind, Let's take a quick tour of a small trainer. I've moved out into the workshop right now, so I have a little bit more room, and I have a Dynam C182 Sky Trainer actual trainer model here to point out those main components as one last review. So let's take a look at the model. Okay, so the first thing we talked about is the fuselage, and the fuselage is this part of the airplane that uh, it forms up the body of the airplane. As you can see, the wings are attached to it and the vertical and horizontal stabilizers are attached to it. Also in an RC model, the fuselage is normally also 
where you find some of the major electronic components, such as the electronic speed control and where you're going to place the battery. Obviously, on the front of the model, this style model anyway, is also where you're going to find the motor. Now, the next part we described was the wings, and you can see this has a fairly straight uh, wing going across perpendicular to the fuselage. The wing provides most of the lift for the airplane. You can also see that the flight controls are mounted on the back part of the wing. So we have the ailerons here, and we have the flaps on the inboard side, and then again the other aileron over here. So let me turn this over real quick, and we'll look at some of the connections just briefly. Okay, so on the bottom of this wing, you can see that there's a servo for the aileron and the servo for the flaps, and they're connected with a control rod that connects to one of the control horns that's mounted on the control surface itself. These are the control surfaces you're going to want to adjust to make sure that they line up uh, very close to the uh, structure of the wing itself. The next part of the structure that we discussed is the empennage, kind of a French word, I think. It just means the tail section, and it's made up of four parts. First is the vertical stabilizer. This provides vertical stabilization, as you might guess, uh, aerodynamically as the airplane flies through the sky. Attached to the back of the vertical stabilizer is the rudder, and the rudder controls rotation around the yaw axis, which is the vertical axis that comes up through the middle of the airplane. Now, the other part is the horizontal stabilizer, and that goes through uh, the fuselage and is on both sides. And on the back of the horizontal stabilizer is the elevator. And the elevator controls uh, rotation around the lateral axis, the axis that goes from wing tip to wing tip. And so the elevator controls pitch. The next thing we mentioned is the propeller. Now this is a three-bladed propeller. Most trainers will come with either three or two-blade propellers, and these are airfoils. They're shaped like the wing is shaped, and they rotate uh, and pull the airplane through the air um, depending upon the size and what's called the pitch or the angle that the airfoil is chopping into the wind uh, will give you an indication of the kind of power that you can expect from the propeller. So that's the propeller. Now I think the last thing we talked about earlier in this lesson was the landing gear. So let me flip this over real quick and we'll do a quick tour of that. Now this particular airplane has a tricycle landing gear. As you can see there are two main gear that are bolted to the model here um, toward the center of gravity, actually just a little behind the center of gravity. And then there is a front nose gear. Now the nose gear is connected to the same servo that the rudder is connected to, and so you use the rudder control on your radio transmitter to steer the airplane while it's on the ground. Airplanes with tricycle landing gear are usually considered easier to control on the ground. So there you have it. Those are the major components to a trainer model aircraft. As we close this video out, if you found it helpful, please click on the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the rcplaneviews.com channel. Click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.